A self-absorbed womanizer pretends to be partially paralyzed to woo a woman, only to fall for her older sister who genuinely suffers from the condition. Arriving at the airport, the carefree womanizer Max Vandor deceives a beautiful woman by claiming he is Mr. Jackson. As they leave the airport, the woman, anticipating somewhat African, is puzzled as the man doesn't match her expectations. But he gets away with it when he lies about having dual citizenship. Returning home after his date, Max trains for his marathon swim with his proctologist friend David who times him. Aware of his friend's womanizing habits, the doctor advises him to pursue relationships with his true identity. However, the stubborn man reveals his plan to dump the woman soon. Suddenly, Max receives a call informing him of his mother's passing. Arriving at the cemetery, he meets his brother Lucian who gives him the keys to their mom's flat, allowing him to take anything he wants. Arriving at the apartment, Max plays music while sitting in his mother's wheelchair. Opening the blue photo album, he discovers a letter tucked inside. As he flips through the pages, he smiles upon seeing old photos and a family drawing. Suddenly, the new tenant Anna enters the apartment after noticing the doors open. She greets him and asks for assistance in moving her closet. However, when she sees him in a wheelchair, she assumes he has partial paralysis. Instead of asking for assistance, she offers to help him before or after her work hours. Taking advantage of this, Max doesn't correct the woman, resuming to fake his condition. While introducing himself, he accidentally knocks over a container, causing balls of yarn to fall. The neighbor picks them up, catching the womanizer's attention. Before leaving, Anna reminds him she's just next door if he needs anything. After the woman leaves, Max kisses his mom's wheelchair, which he plans to use to pick up women. The womanizer shares this with David, who recommends that he see a psychiatrist. The liar says that if his technique works with Anna, he can get any girl. David challenges his idea, asking how he would spend romantic time with a girl while faking his condition. However, Max jokes that he would stand up, take a bow, and walk away like Jesus. After his appointment, the businessman leads the sales meeting at New Run, a sports company he manages. He expresses his dissatisfaction with the results, urging his staff to achieve their goal of beating their competition. Following this, the assistant, Maria, reminds Max of upcoming activities. Worried about his thinning hair, he asks for a transplant update. The woman then informs him that the clinic suggests using hair from the back instead of chest hair. Later that day, Max, in a wheelchair, visits Anna, inviting her to drink coffee at his mom's flat. During their conversation, Anna reveals she is a physiotherapist caring for people with mobility challenges. In response, the businessman lies about his employment status, saying he is grounded. Later, she catches him staring at his chest, but he denies it. Further in the conversation, Max reveals he's single and desires a helpful partner. In response, Anna shares that she prefers casual relationships at the moment. Hearing this, he asks if she has plans for the night, and the woman replies that she'll be cycling with her friends. When he wants to join her, she explains it might be awkward for him since she'll be with a younger group. As she prepares to leave, he admits he is employed and runs a sports company. Impressed by his background, she asks him about his plans for the weekend. That Sunday, Max drives his luxurious car to Anna's place. He pulls over at a field to set up his wheelchair. As he rolls on the roadside, a female driver passes, challenging him to a race. He agrees, but just then, she speeds past him. A moment later, Max meets Anna who introduces him to her parents and sister, who turns out to be Yulia, the female driver earlier. After dinner, Yulia spends some time getting to know their guest. She learns that Max runs a company and enjoys listening to pop music. In turn, the businessman discovers she can play tennis and the violin. Max soon shares his experience with David, who's disappointed in him. The doctor points out that the womanizer lied about many things, not only about his condition but also about his age. Meanwhile that night, Anna enters the flat only to meet Lucian. Curious, she notices the wheelchair behind him, wondering if the businessman left it on purpose, and the naive guy confirms that his brother did. Lucian then invites her in for tea. During their conversation, Anna talks about Max, praising him for being fit and active despite his condition. Hearing this, Lucian realizes that his brother is up to something. Anna reveals her plan to set Max up with her older sister Yulia, thinking they'll hit it off. Then, she gives her number to Lucian, showing interest in him. Before leaving, Anna asks Lucian how Max became partially paralyzed. Unsure of what to say, he suggests it's better if his brother reveals the reason himself. The following morning, Max and Lucian talk over the phone. The mechanic mentions that he understands why his brother would like to inherit the wheelchair, implying he knows about his lie. Lucian warns him that he's making a big mistake and reveals that Anna spoke to him, but admits he didn't tell her the truth. The businessman instructs him to keep it that way. At the office, Maria updates Max about his upcoming meetings and informs him that he has a visitor in a wheelchair. Realizing it's Yulia, the 
businessman immediately sits on his desk, pretending to be partially paralyzed. The woman then suggests that she senses Anna is trying to pair them together. Noticing he's not in his wheelchair, she asks if people usually put him in one. Before Max can answer truthfully, his staff arrives, seeking his advice on their new shoe model. He signals for them to leave. As Max attempts to reveal his secret, Yulia comforts him, assuming it's about feeling ashamed because of people's compassionate stares. She reassures him they're beautifully different from others, reminding him that the wheelchair is his best friend. Maria drops by to give an update, asking the boss to approach her. Maintaining his act, the businessman directs her to walk towards him, but she insists he does it. When Max explains that he can't move, the assistant looks at the woman, understanding what her superior is up to. Seconds later, the assistant reaches her boss through the intercom, updating him about his colonoscopy schedule. Before ending the call, Maria also advises him to maintain his diet and that she has bought him rectal anesthesia. Beside him, Yulia is also listening to the message, prompting the embarrassed Max to pull the plug quickly. Yulia acknowledges Maria's dedication to her job, and Max confirms he has a great assistant. Following this, she invites him to watch her tennis match but warns that the businessman's competition sponsors their shoes. Before she leaves, the woman informs him of two things, that a black runner ad is a cliche and that a bare chest is appealing. Hearing the second one, the man looks at himself, realizing she was referring to him. Taking Yulia's point about the ad, Max approaches Maria at her desk, asking her to analyze the market and endorsement deals. Later that day, Max heads to the tennis court. As he watches Yulia play from a distance, he admires her skills and sportsmanship despite losing to Anna Plozinska. After the game, the businessman walks in the hallway. When he hears Yulia arriving, he sits in a random wheelchair. However, the tennis player notices that he's sitting in hers. Concerned, she asks what happened, prompting Max to fabricate a story that his wheelchair broke down and was taken to the service by his assistant. He asks if he can use hers temporarily, and she allows him. Max then joins her when she invites him to drink with other players. Suddenly, she urges him to have a ping pong battle with Marchin. However, the businessman backs out at the last minute, citing a meeting he needs to attend. When he goes outside, Yulia follows him, assuming he fears losing. She then advises him to show sportsmanship because it makes a man more likable. Maria visits Yulia later that day, returning the wheelchair that Max borrowed from her. The woman invites the assistant to help her pick an outfit for her classical concert. Instead of answering, the assistant compliments her beauty and authenticity. Hearing this, the violinist is flattered and admires her beauty and dedication, thinking her boss is lucky to have her as an assistant. Realizing what Max has done, Maria whispers that her boss is a prick for deceiving such a genuine woman. When Yulia hears this, the assistant makes an excuse, clarifying that she is complaining about something icky. At the office, Maria sticks a note on her boss's shoe with Yulia's concert tour dates. The assistant reminds him that he has a contract signing in Wrocław on the concert date, which means he can attend it in the evening. She urges him to be in the event and admit the truth to Yulia. Thinking about what his assistant said, Max suits up and initially attends the concert without a wheelchair but ends up using an electric one because he chickened out. While watching the show, he borrows another woman's binoculars to see the violinist on stage. Seeing her closer, he can't help but be captivated by the performance. After the show, Max compliments Yulia's beautiful playing, which leads to them having a dinner date. In their conversation, the businessman confesses that he intentionally wanted to see her, stating that he knows her concert dates by heart. Suddenly, Yulia tells him she saw through him, mentioning that he constantly changes. Nervous, Max thinks she's talking about his lie, but it turns out that she is referring to his wheelchairs that he replaces each time. This revelation relieves him, making him resume his act. As they talk, he finds out that she is single. However, their conversation is interrupted when Yulia signals for the vocalist to give the man the microphone, prompting him to sing along with a performer. Yulia and the other diners appreciate his talent, leading to applause. However, he becomes embarrassed and asks the waiter to apologize to everyone. He asks her to forget everything, but she points out that what he did was unforgettable. After leaving the restaurant, they stroll along the bridge while holding hands. Yulia becomes curious and wonders what would happen if all couples held hands simultaneously worldwide. Max jokes that everyone would be having a romantic time at once. As they talk, a street washer appears behind them, prompting them to laugh and move faster. Yulia then invites Max to have drinks at the hotel. However, he explains that he won't stay, but she claims it's okay. Secretly bothered, Yulia watches Max leave from her window. At the office, Maria is disappointed to learn that Max chickened out and did not confess the truth to Yulia. When the assistant asks if he invited the violinist for breakfast, the businessman reveals that he doesn't need to, saying things need time. Hearing this, Maria is proud of her boss for not being a womanizer anymore. Proud of himself, he adds that he declined Yulia's request to stay the night, 
and she didn't seem bothered when he rejected her. In response, Maria feels disappointed, thinking that the woman doesn't like her boss. Meanwhile, Yulia confides in her sister about Max rejecting her. Anna then jokes that her sister's date might be old-fashioned, but wonders why he would make such an effort and not stay the night. When asked if she's fallen for the businessman, Yulia smiles and doesn't want to admit it, saying she wants romance. Later that day, Max consults David about how to spend a romantic time while maintaining his act. The doctor explains that partially paralyzed individuals can still sense various sensations and experience peak moments with the assistance of medication and physiotherapy. Upon returning home, Max calls Yulia, inviting her to have dinner with him, and they agree to see each other on a Monday evening. On their date, Yulia arrives at the businessman's home. Later, she explores the luxurious home and finds a piano, which prompts her to play something beautiful. Hearing the music, Max starts feeling guilty about lying to her. He stands behind her while she plays, intending to admit the truth. However, when she stops playing, he gets nervous and sits back in his wheelchair. During their candlelit dinner, they discuss Neuron's stereotypical ad. The businessman suggests featuring a black athlete instead of someone with achondroplasia could increase sales. The woman implies other approaches to the commercial instead of getting athletes all the time. He acknowledges her point and they share a toast. Later, Max expresses his desire to confess something, making Yulia nervous as she assumes it's about his romantic feelings. She immediately shares that she was once involved with a doctor who cheated on her with a nurse. He inquires if she forgave him, but she asserts she can't forgive deception. Instead of telling the truth, a terrified Max changes his mind. He fabricates a story about how he ended up in a wheelchair, stating he fell off a pony. In turn, Yulia shares what happened to her. She recounts hurrying to a rehearsal but returning home because she forgot her violin. On her way back, she disregarded a yield sign and heard a loud bang, followed by her car sliding across the road. She explains that the other driver broke his collarbone while she lost her leg. Fortunately, her violin remained unharmed. Max then becomes curious about how Yulia maintains her optimism despite her condition. In response, Yulia asks if he's finally hitting on her, and Max confirms this. Suddenly, the floor descends, revealing a pool underneath. Max swims to her as the water fills the area, and they share a passionate kiss. After sharing a romantic moment, they lie on the floor and discuss how they felt the sensation in their minds rather than their bodies. Later, Anna arrives to pick her up, indicating Yulia has decided not to stay the night. Max seeks Maria and David's help the following evening, planning to introduce them to Yulia as his friends. At the restaurant, Lucian joins them for dinner but later reveals that a failed parachute caused his brother's partial paralysis. Hearing this, Yulia's perplexed, mentioning she thought it was a pony. Sensing her confusion, Max intervenes, explaining that his brother used a metaphor. Later, feeling that David and his brother might expose his lie, Max pretends to have food stuck in his throat, prompting them to take him to the restroom. There, David insists that Yulia should learn the truth. However, Max fears that Yulia will end their relationship if she finds out. When they return, Yulia confronts Max, revealing she knows everything because Maria told her. The deceptive man becomes nervous but soon feels relieved when he learns that his girlfriend only refers to to his age. She then asks for his actual birthday to buy him a present. On their way home, Maria and David are disappointed in Max, considering him a coward for not telling the truth. The following day, Max asks his friend for advice. He likes Yulia so much but has a problem with accepting her condition. The doctor then instructs him to do what he usually does to get rid of women, but the businessman admits he'd fallen for the woman because of her authenticity. Their conversation is interrupted when Lucian calls him, asking him to go to the garage. To his surprise, Anna is there and slaps him Upon discovering that he can walk, she tells him to stay away from Yulia, advising him to break up with her sister by showing her his mental health record. Anna insists that Yulia must not discover his deception and gives him 48 hours to disappear from their lives. After the woman leaves, Lucian approaches his brother and lectures him about the importance of honesty in relationships, but he only leaves, disappointed that Anna discovered his lie. Maria then learns about what happened and teases her boss, expressing that only a miracle can save him. Meanwhile, Anna informs Yulia that someone other than Max might be the right guy for her. Their conversation is interrupted when the businessman calls, inviting the woman to accompany him to a sanctuary the next day. After the call, Yulia turns to her sister and tells her about Max's dream, where the Immaculate Mary miraculously healed him. Hearing this, Anna reveals the truth about Max's condition. Surprisingly, Yulia isn't shocked. She confesses that she'd known all along but hadn't told her. She admits that she wanted their relationship to work out and is willing to pursue happiness built on a cheap lie. Anna then asks what Yulia will do if Max stands up, and her sister simply laughs and shrugs in response. The following day, the couple arrives with Maria and David at the sanctuary. Maria is immediately excited by the religious merchandise available. Later, the priest guides them to the front of the church and 
invites Max inside. There, Max shares his dream with the priest, recounting the Immaculate Mary who told him to receive grace. Suddenly, a mallet falls and the pastor catches it, calling it a miracle. Despite this, the priest reveals that he knows the truth about Max. He warns him not to fake a miracle, as it will mislead others. When the businessman asks how the priest knew, he mentions that his running shoes gave it away. He then follows the advice and doesn't stand up, showing that no miracle happened. While the group stops to eat, David buys hot dogs and instructs Yulia to bring the drinks to the car. Along the way, she notices Max with a troubled expression and gives him space. Just as she's about to cross, she laughs while looking at Maria, who's showing off her new shirt. Suddenly, a truck appears behind Yulia, causing panic. Without hesitation, Max gets out of his wheelchair, pushing his girlfriend away to prevent her from getting hit. Witnessing the incident, Maria nervously tells Yulia that a miracle has occurred, and David agrees. Despite anticipating the moment, a tearful Yulia looks at Max, overwhelmed by mixed emotions. Afterward, David and Maria take the woman with them while the businessman decides to walk home. At work the next day, Max watches a new ad for their product featuring running shoes with diverse consumers. Despite the ad's success, he remains preoccupied with what happened the previous day. The next day, at his mom's apartment, Max discovers from his brother that someone's already bought the apartment. He then reconciles with the mechanic, considering him not responsible for Anna discovering his deception. He believes that Yulia's bound to find out the truth eventually anyway. Afterward, they visit their dad at the care home and take him to the cemetery. There, Max reads the letter their mom had left, containing only two words, I'm sorry. Their father understands its meaning, realizing it was his fault for not reconciling with her before her passing. He kisses the letter, expressing his regret to his late wife. Hearing this, Max reflects on his lies and decides to change himself. The next day, Max surprises Maria with a birthday gift, expressing gratitude for her excellent assistance and friendship. They hug, and before leaving, the businessman reminds her that he'll be out of the office the following day. Max then attends Yulia's rehearsal the next morning to apologize personally. He explains that while he can walk, he can never be as authentic as she is. This time, the businessman introduces himself properly and says his correct age. He admits he is a liar and a narcissist, but that changed when he met her. He confesses that he's fallen deep for her and wants the relationship to work out. Despite his sincerity, a tearful Yulia turns away and plays her violin instead. The next day, Max joins a fun run but feels tired and pauses. While he catches his breath, Yulia, who appears to have forgiven him, challenges him to a race, leading to their reconciliation. Max rolls the wheelchair with Yulia on his lap. Upon reaching the finish line, the people applaud them, prompting the couple to kiss and hug. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.